Welcome. It is Friday, and on this wonderful day um, of July the 8th, we share the word. But before we begin, let us begin in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm, I, this was one of the first prayers I turned to in the new uh, rite and the Roman Missal. And I said, whoever uses that word abasement? It was some, I just said, I don't think people in general are going to understand this mm -hmm. prayer. And um, we've used it for three years. And sometimes it's actually where you place the emphasis that helps you to really understand the word. Mm -hmm. But I, some children were talking to me after Mass one day. And I said, why don't you look the word up <laughs> and tell me what it means? Because, you know, for me to just ta tell them, right over right, their head. Exactly, no. So we t we'd taken an opportunity to uh, uh, to share um, the idea. They did. They they came back and they were so um, uh, courageous in sharing with me uh, what they came to know from their research. And so, mm, if you're out there great. and you're wondering what a basement means, uh, why don't you Google it? I think you'll be quite surprised. So today we're looking at the Gospel mm -hmm. of Matthew. It's chapter 10, verses 16 to 23. And within the missionary instruction of the apostles are these interesting words about future reflections with the Jewish synagogue and Gentile courtrooms. These words reflect um, the latter post-resurrection experience of the church. And the Pontifical Biblical Commission states in April 1964 that we should understand the gospel as a reflecting later conditions, reflecting later conditions. The gospel of Matthew was written perhaps in the 80s. Well, I just gave a class and I said, could be the 60s or the 70s. And it's interesting how the date uh, begins to change just because of certain things that we begin to hear from other sciences that are looking at language, um, lifestyle, um, and also what happened in, in the country um, where uh, the person was writing. So it's always good uh, to keep up with what might be changing um, in regards to the wonderful scripture of who's who, when did they write, and to whom were they writing. Mm -hmm. So which um, such conflicts were being experienced by the church, um, we find Matthew writing. And um, we find that Matthew really is writing to the Jewish community. And Mark is writing to the Gentile community. So you'll note that when um, Matthew speaks, he doesn't give a lot of background um, to... Um, the, the Jewish community because they already know the background of their faith so they don't need to reiterate it. Um, and so that was one of the important points that we found in studying Matthew last week. So our gospel today, um, it's the gospel of Matthew chapter 10, 16 to 23. Jesus said to his apostles, Behold, I am sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves. So be shrewd as serpents and simple as doves. But beware of men, for they will hand you over to courts and scourge you in their synagogues. And you will be led before governors and kings for my sake, as a witness before them and the pagans. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. You will be given at that moment what you are to say. For it will not be you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will hand over brother to death, and the father his child. Children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. 
You will be hated by all because of my name, but whoever endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to another. Amen, I say to you, you will not finish the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. So we find here the importance of the fact that um, Jesus is calling the, the disciples um, to go out and he's sending them uh, out like sheep among wolves um, it's ad- in other words he's really saying to them watch where you're going um, take a look at who is caring for you and who are you caring for realize that um, that you are important to God and that God will give you what you need so as they speak Um, As they um, go from place to place, um, they are being called um, and they'll be called um, into trial. They'll be called into um, courtrooms where kings sit to give witness before um, those types of people. But at the same time, being individuals that give witness before all of the, the Gentiles. And they're doing it on the count of Jesus. So Jesus within this context is also sharing with them it's going to be difficult. It's going to be somewhat painful um, and it will not be um, a means by which uh, people will be glad to hear what you have to say. Because in sharing the truth what we found um, in history of the church is that um, people are not necessarily free and open to share the mystery and the words of the church because they're afraid. They're afraid of what might happen to them. And so they stand back. They don't seem to get involved. Jesus is saying to the disciples that he sends out, um, don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Go out, profess, proclaim. Be that example in this world of word and deed to those individuals um, who have not heard the word or shared in life. And they gave such an example that their example really changed the world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it would be so interesting to to sit down and read some history about the time that um, Matthew is writing and see how even Roman citizens were treated. Um, many of them um, had what we would call second class jobs. Um, they were Amer- they were Roman citizens, so that meant that they couldn't be crucified but they could have their head chopped off. Um, They were seen, if they were not from a wealthy family, they were seen as property. Mm -hmm. And so people didn't care. The wealthy didn't care for their property. You do what I do, you um, act the way I tell you to, or else. Mm -hmm. That was the simple life of everybody. And I I think generally, everybody, including, including those who were wealthy, because then they would have to turn to the emperor. <coughs> they lived in fear, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. fear of their lives. So it, it's really, um, you know, interesting how we find um, the gospel being shared out in the world in the time of Matthew. Um, people were really ready to hear the gospel mm-hmm. message because it brought to them freedom. It brought to them joy. It brought to them a peace that no one could take away from them. And hope. And hope. And hope. What a tremendous Mm -hmm. process it was for them to receive all of these wonderful words that allowed them to say, I think I can find joy in this life. Bye-bye. Goodbye.